Jesus is the central figure of the whole Bible, both the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, he's hidden and anticipated. In the New Testament, he is revealed and he is enjoyed. The Bible is God speaking to us and speaking about and through his Son. Welcome to Open the Bible with Pastor Colin Smith. I'm David Pick. And Colin, what we're talking about today is central to everything that this ministry of Open the Bible is all about. The authority of the Word of God, that it's God himself speaking to us through Scripture. Yeah, that's exactly right. And what a person or what a church believes about the Bible is going to have an enormous shaping influence on the nature of the ministry. I heard someone recently saying, oh, the Bible is information. Well, if the Bible's only information, you're only going to go when you feel like you need some question answered. That's going to be at the edges of ministry. Everything else is going to be about some kind of activity. The Bible's not going to be at the center. The Bible's more than information. The Bible is light and light and food and milk and meat. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Now, if it's my food, I'm going to be going there every day because I can't live without it. I'm going to starve. So what we believe about the Bible, that it is the word of God, that it is the means by which spiritual life is given and by which it's sustained, that's of huge importance. Mm -hmm. And today I really want to encourage us to be deeply rooted in firm conviction about Scripture being the word of God. So let's get into scripture. I hope you'll be able to join us in Colossians 3 as we begin the message, The Word of God. Here's Colin. I want us to look today at the second of the four friends, the Word of God. And so I hope that you will open your Bible at Colossians in chapter 3 and verse 16. So I want to care for my soul and thank God the Son of God is present with me as a Christian believer, present with every Christian by the Holy Spirit. Christ lives in you. And now we're being told in Colossians chapter 3 and verse uh, 16 that the word of Christ, the word of God must also live in you. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness to God in your hearts. And my prayer for our time together today in the Word of God has been twofold. First, that God will strengthen our convictions about the Bible being His Word. And I want to try and uh, show you why that is so critically important and so very, very practical. And then being affirmed in our conviction that the Bible is indeed the Word of God for us to be encouraged in our actual use of it in our lives. See, here's the question. Does the Word of God dwell richly in you? Does it remain in you? And is it there in an abundant measure? Is it dwelling richly in you? Or is your experience that the the word of God, sort of you hear a message and it sort of is something that passes you and brushes off you in the course of your life. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. That's how you care for your soul. That's how you nourish your soul. The son of God, the word of God. I want us to look at what, the word, what this word is, why it matters, what it produces, and then for us to respond to it together. We begin here then, what this word is. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Now, I want you to notice that in this verse, God's communication with us, which is usually described as the word of God, is here quite distinctly described as the word of Christ. Now that phrase, the word of Christ, is only used twice in the entire New Testament, once here in Colossians 3.16, and the other time in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, where we read that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. This phrase, the word of Christ, a synonym synonym for the word of God, reminds us of something that is very important that we often emphasize here in the orchard, which is that the whole Bible is one story and all of it is about Jesus Christ. 
We're convinced of that because uh, the Bible tells us about an occasion when the Pharisees, uh, who studied the Old Testament very diligently, were speaking with Jesus. And Jesus said to them, these scriptures, the Old Testament scriptures, speak about me. And you remember on the road to Emmaus, Jesus is helping two confused disciples, and he shows them from Moses and the prophets and all the way through the Old Testament, the things that are concerning himself. So Jesus is the central figure of the whole Bible, both the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, he's hidden and anticipated. In the New Testament, he is revealed and he is enjoyed. But he is the center of the whole Bible because the whole point of everything that God communicates to us is that we should come to know and to enjoy and to love and serve and believe in and live for Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, and the Lord of all. And this is the great theme of Colossians that many of us have been studying throughout the summer. It is in Christ that God had all his fullness dwelling. It is in Christ that God has triumphed over all of the dark powers. It is in Christ that believers are rooted and built up and established in the faith. The Bible is God speaking to us and speaking about and through his Son. Now, the Christian church has agreed and affirmed this in overwhelming measure for nearly 2,000 years. And I say nearly 2,000 years because about 100 years ago, a new and very different view of the Bible began to emerge. Charles Darwin had grasped the minds and the hearts of many people with his theory of evolution, suggesting that the world could be explained entirely by natural causes and processes. And it's a fascinating thing as a matter of history to trace the way in which some leaders in the church began in the years that followed to recast their view of the Bible in the light of evolutionary theory. The conviction of the church had always been that the Bible is God's word to us, that God exists, that God has made himself known, that the Bible tells us what God has said and what God has done, and that the story is about God. It is God's word, and it is spoken into God's world. But you can understand that the new thinking for many seems to turn all of that on its head. Some began to ask, well, now, wait, we've been told that this, the story is all about God, but if it is really the case that the whole of the world and everything that is around us and even we ourselves can all be explained by natural processes and causes, then it would seem that the story is actually all about us. And if the story is all about us, then what's the Bible? Well, if the story is all about us, then the Bible would not be God's word to us. What it would be is the record of our words about God. And we would expect to find that as we developed over time, that uh, our words about God began as being rather crude uh, and harsh and exclusive, and that they refined over time to become more sophisticated, more refined, and more inclusive. The Bible then would be viewed as the evolving story of human thinking about how God might be. Now, you will understand immediately then that these are two entirely different views of the Bible. In one, the Bible is God's word speaking to us, God speaking, and he's making himself known. In the other, it's our word about God. We are the ones who are speaking. This is the product of human thinking and of human insight and so forth and so on that naturally changes and evolves and is thought to improve over a period of time. And, and the Bible, therefore, is really a, a record of our reaching out and trying to explore and figure things out and so forth and so on. Now, these are two entirely different views. And which one settles in your mind and which one you most deeply believe, 
will shape how you use the Bible and how you respond to it. So if you come to believe that the Bible is essentially human words about God, then you may use the Bible as a resource. You may go to it for insight and for encouragement. But when you find that it does not fit well with your particular view of life or your desired direction or your view of how things should be, you will feel very free to disagree with it and disregard it and choose your own path. Why? Because if the Bible is simply a collection of human words about God, you will look at this old book and you will say, that was then, this is now. And you realize that there are people all around us across this culture who are approaching the Bible exactly in that kind of way, and therefore do not feel that it has authority in regards to their lives, but merely as a source book to kind of evaluate and to pick up those things that still seem to be true and relevant and fitting. Now, I want to make it very clear that in this church, we do not view the Bible as a collection of human words or insights about God, that in this church, we regard the Bible as the church historically has always regarded the Bible as God's word to us. And we affirm that particularly in our statement of faith, which is a statement of faith shared by all of the churches in the denomination to which we belong, the Evangelical Free Church of America. And it has three sentences in its article on uh, Scripture, and let me just uh, remind you of them. This is a statement that is affirmed by every person who becomes a member of this church. And so if you sign up for the membership class, you'll be taken through the statement of faith, what we believe about Scripture and about Christ and all the main articles uh, of faith. And if you're a member of this church, then you are someone who is committed to and affirms the uh, faith uh, that we share with regards to Scripture, and we express it in these words. We believe that God has spoken in the Scriptures. Now, you see the key phrase there is God has spoken. This isn't human, a collection of human words about God. This is God himself doing the speaking, and he does it through the words of human authors in both the Old and the New Testament, through the prophets in the Old Testament, through the apostles in the New Testament. But here's the thing that matters. It is God who is doing the speaking. It comes from the mouth of God. Second sentence, as the verbally inspired word of God, the Bible is without error, which of course would follow if it's human words about God, it'll be full of errors because humans are full of errors. But if God has actually spoken, God is not in the habit of making mistakes. And so when I find something that I cannot understand or something that I cannot resolve, my first instinct is not to say God got it wrong again, but to say, I don't have enough information at this point, and I'm going to keep my eyes open and my mind open, and I'm going to look and trust that God will give at some point some understanding that is greater than what I have right now. It is the complete revelation of his will for salvation and the ultimate authority by which every realm of human knowledge and endeavor should be judged. In other words, we don't take as our starting point, let's look at everything that's being said in the world and see how it fits with the Bible. We start with the word of God and say, let's look at what God has said to us and let's evaluate what's going around us in the light of what God has spoken. It's a very, very different way of viewing the world. And here's the third sentence. Therefore, this word is to be believed in all that it teaches. It is to be obeyed in all that it requires. And it is to be trusted in all that it promises. I'm so glad to have the privilege of being part of and serving in a church that affirms what the church throughout its history has always been clear on, that the Bible is the word of of God. He has spoken it. You're listening to Open the Bible with Pastor Colin Smith and a message called The Word of God. And if you've tuned in late or if you ever miss one of our messages, you can always go back or listen again online at our website, openthebible.org.uk. We've been looking at what the Word is, and next we'll see why it matters. Back to the message, here's Colin. Let's move on to the second thing. Why does it matter? We've spoken about the Bible, the Word of God, two very, very different views. Why does it matter? Now, someone's going to be here and saying, you know, what difference does it make to my life on Thursday 
or the pain that I'm going through right now, whether the Bible is human words about God or God's word, it makes all the difference to what you're going through right now. Let me demonstrate how and why. If God has not spoken, his promises are replaced by our wishes. See, think about some of the great promises of Scripture. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. My God will supply all that you need according to his riches in glory. Here's the question. Who said these words? You see, if these words came from the mouth of God, if God actually said them, if they are the word of God, they are promises on which you can depend. They are promises on which you can live in the difficulties that you are facing this week. But if these words, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. My God will supply all your need. I mean, if these words were simply human words about God, if they simply arose from the aspiration of the souls of the men who wrote these particular words, then they are not promises on which you could depend, but merely wishes that arise from the heart of Paul or Isaiah or whoever it might be. They may be wishes that you would all cherish, but they are not promises on which you can depend unless God has spoken them. So if you come to believe that the Bible is a word about God rather than God's word to us, you actually undermine the very foundation of hope itself. You cut the cord that leads to hope and you replace God's promises with a set of human wishes and aspirations. And you can't live on that this week. Second, if God has not spoken, then his truth is replaced by our opinion. The Bible says, God is gracious, slow to anger. He is merciful and he is abounding in steadfast love. That fourfold description, gracious, merciful, slow to anger and abounding in love is repeated no less than seven times in the Old Testament. The question is, whose words are these? If God himself spoke these words, then they are his own description of who he is. And we can be sure that he is indeed gracious and merciful and slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love because this is what God has told us about himself. But if these words were simply the thoughts of Moses or David or Nehemiah or Jonah, then we do not have truth on which we can count for our lives today. All we have is the experience or opinion of these particular men, which may or may not prove to be true or relevant for us today. And when people buy into this kind of view of the Bible, this idea that it's human words about God, you end up with vacuous discussions in Bible study groups that go along the lines of this. Uh, well, you know, Moses clearly found that God was gracious and merciful and uh, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. But what about you? What do you think God is like? Who is God to you? And, you? and you see, so then everyone throws in their own opinion and there's no fo solid foundation of truth for any of it. It's merely a conversation. How do you see God? See, when the word of God to us is viewed as our word about God, not only do we lose the promises and end up just with a bunch of human wishes, but we lose the truth that is the very foundation of faith on which a person can build life, and we end up simply with a bunch of human opinions. What do you think? What do I think? What difference does it make anyway? Third, if God has not spoken, then his wonderful welcome, his embrace, and his love are replaced by our unending journey. Think about this. The Bible is a book full of invitation. It's all over. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant of love with you. 
draw near to God and he will draw near to you. What kind of an invitation is that from the Almighty? Come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. You hear the invitation in all of these wonderful words. The question, of course, is who said them? If God really said these things, then God himself is reaching out to you in love. And we have much more than a God who's out there somewhere uh, watching us from a distance. We have, if God has spoken these words, truly a God who reaches out to you and in love and in all of your need even today says, come to me. And you on that basis can come to him in confidence and know that you will be received in love and that you can enjoy an authentic, true relationship with this living God who loves you and you know it to be so because he has invited you to come. He said it himself. But if these words draw near to God and he will draw near to you, if they were simply the words of James, if they were simply the words of Isaiah, if they were simply a reflection of what other people have discovered, how could you possibly know the same would be true? for you. And here's one of the great tragedies of our generation in which you know there are thousands of people who would describe themselves as being on a spiritual journey, on a spiritual search, and it's all seeking and there's hardly any finding. Why? Because the word of the living God who reaches out to us in invitation and in love and in mercy and in grace has been ditched and all we're left with is our own unending journey. You have loads of people who will say, I'm seeking after God, all in their own way, but losing sight completely of the God of love who is seeking people. So do you see how much is at stake here? You see how relevant this is to your life on Thursday or whenever? If the Bible is our word about God rather than God's word to us, then God's promises end up being replaced by our wishes and we lose the basis of hope. God's truth ends up being replaced by our opinions and we lose the foundation of faith. And God's wonderful welcome and his reach out to us in love is replaced by this ongoing, ongoing journey and we lose the assurance of his love. All we lose when we lose sight of the scripture being God's word is faith, hope and love. We lose everything. We lose everything. You've been listening to Open the Bible with Pastor Colin Smith and a message called The Word of God. We've been hearing about why the word matters and we'll pick up this message next time. So I hope you'll join us then. If you ever miss one of our messages, you can always go back and listen again or catch up online at our website, openthebible.org.uk, or find us as a podcast. That'll be on your favourite podcasting site, and you'll also find a link to the podcasts on our website. The website address again, openthebible.org.uk. Open the Bible depends on your generosity to keep Pastor Collins' teaching on this station and online. And as you set up a new monthly gift to the work of Open the Bible this month, we want to thank you by sending you a free copy of Chris Lungard's book, The Enemy Within, Straight Talk About the Power and Defeat of Sin. Colin, who would you say this book is for? Well, first is for anyone who is a Christian. By definition, a Christian is a person in whom the Holy Spirit dwells. And also by definition, a Christian is a person who is engaged in a serious battle against sin. The Apostle Paul says we've got to put to death the misdeeds of the body by the power of the Holy Spirit who lives within you. And here's the thing. As you grow in the Christian life, you actually become more aware of the sins that you need to fight against in your life, not less aware of them. So there's an increasing sense of battle that a Christian experiences. And this book by Chris Lungard, The Enemy Within, is one of the most helpful books I have ever found on the subject of the battle of the Christian life. It is really encouraging. I've found it helpful. And I think that everyone who reads it will find it helpful too. Well, we want to send you a copy of this book, Chris Lingard, The Enemy Within, Straight Talk About the Power and Defeat of Sin. And it's our thank you gift to you if you're able to set up a new donation to the work of Open the Bible this month 
in the amount of £5 per month or more. Full details on our website, openthebible.org.uk. For Open the Bible and for Pastor Colin Smith, I'm David Pick, and I hope you'll be able to join us again next time on Open the Bible. Where does spiritual life come from? There are three very different answers out there. Find out what they are next time on Open the Bible.